It would be an understatement to say, but the Javelin missile has been getting a lot of attention recently. Despite all the memes and saying Javelin stuff, most people don't know exactly why the Javelin is so special. To really nail down why the Javelin is so good, you have to take a look at its competition. Specifically, what it replaced and what opposition forces were using. These would be the M47 Dragon, 9K-115 Metis, and 9M-133 Cornet. Much like the Javelin, the Dragon was a manned portable ATGM made by the US. It used semi-automatic command to line sight guidance, or SAC loss, meaning that the gunner didn't manually control the missile. He would simply point the reticle at a target. Upon firing, the missile would automatically fly to where the reticle was pointing. This meant that the gunner would have to sit and guide the missile until it hit the target, exposing him for quite some time, especially since the missile was relatively slow. Instead of a continuous burn, the rocket motors inside the Dragon burn sequentially. It creates an odd popping sound you can hear in this video. Dragon's range was quite limited, and it was fairly difficult to aim. Max range was around a kilometer, with a mean PK of just 40%. PK means probability of kill. Between 100 and 250 meters, PK was 75%, but at 1 kilometer, that decreased to just 10%. Dragon was a hard launch system, meaning it could not be safely fired within buildings. A few years after Dragon entered service, a first generation thermal site was developed for it. This was kept separate from the primary day site. I couldn't find truly reliable numbers for penetration, but for Dragon 1, it seems to be around 33 centimeters or so. With the improved Dragon 2, it could manage about 61. The Metis is fairly comparable to Dragon 1. They have around the same penetration and range, though Metis is much lighter. I don't believe it had a thermal sight. It isn't technically soft launch, but it can be fired from buildings, assuming you have enough space anyway. The Cornet is an entirely different beast. It's more akin to a tow missile than a Javelin or Dragon, but it is technically man-portable, and has very high performance. It's a laser beam riding missile, and can go through over a meter of steel. The full system is pretty heavy, over 63 kilograms. Apparently there is a lightweight version, called Cornet MR, but that reduces its range from 5 to 2 kilometers. Finally, let's compare all the systems to Javelin. The Javelin has two primary components, the missile and the command launch unit, or CLU. The CLU has a second generation thermal site, which is pretty impressive, considering the Javelin entered service in the 90s. Newer versions likely have even better sites. To designate a target, the gunner puts track gates onto the target, and basically he puts a box around the object. Unlike other missile systems such as Stinger, the Javelin does not use coolant like Argon to keep the seeker cool. Instead, it uses a low consumption electronic cooling unit. This allows it to operate for up to 4 hours on just one battery. Before the primary rocket motor kicks in, the missile is soft launched from the tube. The missile then guides itself to the target autonomously. As soon as the missile is fired, the gunner is free to do whatever he wants. He can either take cover or engage a second target. During flight, the Javelin essentially takes reference images of the target. These images are then compared to each other. So even if the target changes direction or orientation, the missile is able to keep track of it. The Javelin has two modes of attack, direct or top. Direct is used for anything that isn't a tank, bunkers, light vehicles, stuff like that. As you can probably guess, the missile flies at the target almost head on. For vehicles with heavy armor, top attack is used. The Javelin takes a lofting trajectory. It soars to about 500 feet. It then dives on the target, striking it from an almost vertical angle. Vehicles have very little armor on the top, though some Russian tanks do have ERA there. That might present a problem for Javelin, right? Not quite. The Javelin has a tandem warhead, meaning that a precursor charge detonates the ERA. This clears the way for the main charge. Even then, Javelin's penetration is quite high. There aren't any concrete numbers, but according to this document from the Marine Corps, penetration is well in excess of 30 inches. That's over 76 centimeters. Some figures put it above 80. When the Javelin was first introduced, its max range was about 2.5 kilometers. Since then, it's been increased to over 4. Remember how the Dragon had a mean PK of around 40%? At that same time, the Javelin had a PK of 91%, well over double that of the Dragon. Later, that would increase to 95%. Complete weight of the Javelin is about 22 kilograms, making it extremely portable. Newer versions are even lighter. It's difficult to explain just how much of a leap forward Javelin was. With previous AT systems, you had to wait until the tank was practically on top of you, and even then, it wasn't guaranteed that you'd get a kill. With a Javelin, that is entirely reversed. Now the tanks are the ones getting outranged. Not only that, but AT gunners can now shoot and scoot. Even today, there aren't many comparable systems. I don't know if Javelin's the best system out there, but hopefully you now understand why it's hyped up so much. Anyway, that's all I've got to say. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.